Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Sylvester Hampton, a one man of God unfiltered. Um, this lesson today is, is an exciting lesson. The Holy Spirit got me up this morning and he says that you got to break it down a little bit more to folk. Um, I don't know why the Holy Spirit gives me these subjects to talk about, but I don't, I don't question. I just do. Thus said what the Holy Spirit told me to do. Um, I'm going to give it to you as he gave to me. But what I'm going to do is that I want to define um, and, 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 and I'll read what the dictionary says. Sometimes there's power in the words because a lot of times what we do is we hear things and say things but not de dive into what the word truly means. And so this, is, this lesson is just diving into it. The lesson today that I'm going to talk about is going to be entitled, God is not fair. God is not fair. No, he's not. He's not a fair God. The God that I serve is not fair. I'm, what Now, what we have to do is break down the word fair. The dictionary says that fairness is a quality of be, making judgment that are free from discrimination. Like judges, umpires, and teachers are examples. Fairness comes from pleasing, attractive, and life like the world describes physical beauty. Um, and, and another thing that he says is there's the quality of treating people equal or in a way that's right or reasonable. A real sense of fairness and hate it and hate just injustice. Expression of fairness adds a favorable comment that someone or something you have just mentioned and correct a false uh, perceived a perception or favoritism that you might have given. Fairness makes everyone in the group has and have an equal opportunity to benefit. Equal opportunity to benefit. Fairness is a quality or state of being of being fair, lack of favoritism. Now, if you think God, who we say God is a good God, he's not a fair God. He's a good God. Define the word good. The definition of good is morally right and righteous. Okay? God is a good God. That means that he's morally right and righteous. It never said that he's a fair God. What people are doing nowadays is that you are judging good and fairness and you're giving them equal footing on things. You are allowing your household to be a fair place. And so when you uh when you open up your doors and say that who shall ever come fairness, then then you you're you're allowing Satan to come in there and he's going to destroy Satan seeks out who he destroys and what he's doing is he's destroying our family. Our families. That's the reason why we are where we are today. And the first um, person that Satan attacks is your helper. Your helper. That's the reason why we're battling our helpers or our wives head to head. That's the reason why they think that they, can, that they, they are equal to you and their opinions matter. You're giving them their opinions. An opinion is something that is formed through man's giving. And, and, a big, and opinions can be ch changed and shaped. Opinions go by whatever the way the wind blows. It could be left and it can blow right. Today it could be in the middle. It could be in the left or it could be in the right. Those are opinions. God has no... He says that 
lean not unto your own understanding because your own understanding is finite and can be is in an opinion like I, I go back to my old neighborhood in my my grandmama's old neighborhood and as a child we used to all go back to my grandmama's house every summer uh, my father was in the Air Force, so our treat was to go back to Grandmama's house every summertime and and visit Grandma and and um, and and so the street that that uh, she lived I thought was a long street because everything as a child looked so much bigger. So now that I'm an adult, I go back and I say, "Damn, that's a short street." And I'm thinking that my grandmama's house is so huge. And I say, damn, that's a small house. I remember it being so big. Everything goes through a child's eye. Don't forget, we are children of God. And so things that, that we see as children are bigger than what they truly are. The word of Satan. Satan wants you to believe that he's so huge and he's going to do things with you and if you give him a little bit of a space and you give him a little bit of, of attention and treat him on equal ground as God, he's going to take it. He always, the word is that you, you give someone a, 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 an inch, they're going to take a mile. Well, that's Satan's attitude. That's his, that's his thing. You give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. That's just like you inviting a little a boy to your house. You have a daughter. You only have a one bedroom. So you say that, well, me and my wife occupy one bed and I want to have my guests um, feel comfortable. So I'm going to allow you to sleep with my daughter, but make sure you don't do anything bad to my daughter. Here's a 17-year-old boy or 18-year-old boy that you're allowing to sleep with your 17 or 16-year-old daughter. And hoping and, and saying, telling him to be right. You're thinking that he's righteous. He's not. He's going to do what he naturally um, um, is uh, made to do. He's going to try to screw your daughter. Come on, that just makes common sense. That's what we're doing when we are entertaining the thought of Satan. We're thinking that God's fair. God's not fair. Because he knows the nature of Satan. He knows the nature of the enemy. The enemy, give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. And before you know it, he's going to make God's word, which is good God word, and he's going to defy you from God's good word, righteousness. He don't like righteousness. And that's what we're faced with now because we put God in the category of being fair. Heck no! God is not fair. He's trying to teach our, us as his children how to be righteous. If we accept God and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we, and you know, and we feel that, and we know that we know that we know that God is a good God, that means that that He wants the best for us. He's given His all and all first. It's not a business arrangement. Get that through your head. You got to understand. And if you believe that God is God and God is a good God, he's not fair, then you're right on the right track. You don't give equal bidding and equal footing to the enemy. That's fairness. Because we already know that the enemy is going to try to destroy you and kill you. And the way that the enemy wants, he wants you to come down to his, and he's, it's a battle of your soul. It's a battle of your soul. And he wants to take your soul away from you. That's what's going on now. And your soul is your children. They're part of your soul. And they're also the part of you as a man and your legacy. He wants to steal your legacy from you. He wants to make your children heathens. 
And he wants to destroy the 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 the, the blue, God's blueprint of the family, how the family is supposed to go. And the and the first tool that he uses is your helper. If he can cause a rift between you and your helper, then he got you. Because now you got to go home and justify and try to tell your helper um, everything that you, every decision that you make is a righteous decision because you're a man and you're logical. But your helper is looking at everything that's coming out of your mouth as something that is going to diminish her, make her a slave. So she's going to fight against everything that you say because Satan is going to try to impose on her that everything that's coming out of your mouth is not good. That's and, and I told you that um, that Satan has a way of making um, fairness is is like let's see fairness behavior is an attitude is an attitude of respect for um, local priorities and eagerness to to learn from people recognizing the value by recognizing worth. We send messages of respect and delight. You cannot send a message of, of, of delight and favoritism on the side of Satan because he has no fairness and he has no, um, when you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile because once you entertain him, then, then he's going to, he's going to, he's going to do you in. That's the reason why God says, don't entertain, watch the company that you keep. Watching the company that you keep, you are inviting company into your house. This is your house. Your body is your house. And you're inviting evil company in your house and you're using, you're thinking that good and bad is equal. They're not. They're not. There is nothing equal to God because he's a righteous God. Once you get that through your head that he's a righteous God and righteousness and good, then you know that he everything that he wants to give you is something that's going to benefit you. But fairness says that you put everything on equal bidding and 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 give everybody a chance to convince. Um, um, you can't do that. God never intended for you to open up your your household to get fairness. And so what Satan uses, I told you he uses the tools of, of his weapons of mass destruction is the TV, the telephone, and fem feminism. Those are his top two or three references of his weapons of mass destruction. And all of them are dealing with fairness because you're coming to the table trying to be fair. God is not fair because fairness means that you're giving everybody good and bad equal bidding. The, the, uh, that's the reason why God wanted us to stay from that, that tree in the forest, the tree of the knowledge of good and e evil. That's what this whole thing is about. We ate from the tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil. We don't have the capability of, of, of trying to distinguish them both because we're giving both of them equal footing. That's the problem that we're having. That's the root cause. Because we ate from, and, and Adam did that thing, that's the reason why he was banished from the Garden of Eden. Because he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We don't have the capability of distinguishing both. And what Satan wants you to do is to be fair. Because he knows that you don't know the difference and you, you have a problem with dealing with the good and evil. Because all you need to do is give him a chance to, to, to open up your, to, to listen to him. Once you listen to him, he's going to put all this logic in your head to make you turn away from who, who your righteous God is. God's righteousness. All he needs is just an inch. 
and he's going to take a mile. That's the reason why our women nowadays, men have been saying, I want you to come to me as truth. No makeup, no eyelashes, no nothing. I want to see my, my, my helper and my wife as how she truly is. But what Satan has done is make her believe that she's got to put all these fancy makeups and everything on her face to hide who she truly is because she hates who she truly is. You hate yourself because you think that you got to put on makeup and everything to put on a mask to, to entice the man into liking you. And once you get in there, and once you're invited as his wife, then you turn into hell. Because you got in there um, using the sheep's clothing, and there's a wolf within. Because your mind has been tarnished with the enemy anyway. So the enemy has gotten your mind already. And so, and so you're going to a marriage. Remember I told you the difference between marriage and holy matrimony. I'm talking marriage now. You're going into a marriage using business, man-made standards. You're going to a marriage looking for a profit. It's a business arrangement and it expires. God never intended for us to go through a marriage. Marriage is man's thing. Marriage is conditional. Holy matrimony is God's thing and it's a life-changing thing and the only way you get out of holy matrimony is somebody's got to die out of it. That's the reason why God never mentioned divorce because you're not supposed to be able to be divorced from a holy matrimony. And that's the reason why us Levites are supposed to deal with only holy matrimony. Amen? We've talked about that before. So all the stuff I'm, that I'm talking about all ties in. We got to go to the root cause of why we do what we do. And why we do what we do. Don't forget, in the Garden of Eden, when, when Eve and looked upon that, that tree in the midst of the, the farm that God told us to stay away from, that Adam told her that God told us to stay away from, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it looked pleasing pleasing it looked pleasing to the eye pleasing that's what what happens when these women our girls are so bombarded with what they see on tv which is one of the weapons of mass destruction tv is brainwashing them and believing what they see and they're and they're getting advice from women on these panels like the View and 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 looking at shows like the Equalizer, Nine One One, all these TV shows that they see on TV that they are put and seeing women in roles that they're not supposed to be in. But but their function in Hollywood is is like uh, Hollywood is like in the story The Wiz. Um, um, it, 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 it deals with trying to, uh, because Satan is the prince of the air and the airways, he's the prince of, so he bombards you with all these false things and, and, and you you are looking at the world through rose colored glasses. All these little sayings that we, we think about mean something. Um, I mentioned that this is my book, my third book book and it has to do with the revelation of the whiz and you can get this you can write me and ask me and you can get this through amazon all you have to do is put um, my name in the search bar and you you will get the book and in that, that book i talked about what i'm talking about now is how um the whiz is the 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 uh all say all. You remember when they were going around in a circle and he says the color today is gold, the color today is red, and you conform to what he says? Conforming to the word of, of what Satan has given you. And that's what's happening on the TV. He uses the TV as doing the same thing. You remember when um, when the um, when he wants to communicate with you, he, he used the airways 
to get us to conform to his ways. And 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 when you when when they went to the 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 area where where Satan is or the whiz is, you find out that he's just a little man. And you find out that he's not as mighty as you say. That's what God is trying to convey to us, that Satan is not as mighty as, as he is. There is no one equal to God. If you get that through your head, you will start to turn away from Satan and look to God because you know that God's word, he wants the best for you, just as you want the best for your children. And God uses man as his tool to communicate. He's done that from day one. Adam communicated directly with God. God passed down what his standards were to Adam. He told Adam what the rules were to live in that in 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 that um, in garden in the Garden of Eden. He told him what the rules were. It was up to Adam to tell it to his helper. God never talks to the helper. That's disrespectful. Adam was the head. You never talk to the helper. You only way you communicate through the helper is through the head. But if you have a a if you have an attitude that you and the head are the same, that's wrong. And Satan and feminism got you thinking that. And because you're thinking that, that's the reason why it's not working. That's the reason why, why you go to a marriage trying to get a profit out of it. It's not a business arrangement. But you go to the to you using a business arrangement attitude, but going with a theme of holy matrimony bringing to marriage. But you have a business attitude. That's the reason why you think you can walk away anytime you want. That's the reason why 80% of the marriages fail when the woman, your helper, walks away. She's the one that puts in that word of divorce. She's the one that walks away from the marriage because she don't feel that she's getting fair or she feels that she can do better. You don't have that opportunity with the holy matrimony. There is no such thing as divorce. Because in the holy matrimony, you know that there's only one head and you abide and you go with that one head. God put a whole lot of responsibility on the shoulders of the man because the man is who he talks through to you. The man is righteous. He's following a righteous God. And he's logical. Because the attributes of God is logic. The attributes of God is righteous. He don't want to cause any harm to you. It's just like you, you with your children, for example. That's the reason why he used children as a tool. to. God teaches us in parables. He takes a, a everyday thing that we understand and, and, and make it a biblical or spiritual lesson. That's the reason why he, he calls us his children. We are the children of God. Because he's our parent. And as a parent, you know that you don't, you're not going to feed your kids poison. You're going to feed your kids nourishment that's going to help them. And that's what God wants from us. And fairness has absolutely nothing to do about it. Do with it. Fairness means that you can, and that in your household, you're opening up your doors to good and evil coming through your household. And man, you're supposed to be protection. You're supposed to protect what comes through the, your doors. Remember, we are the protection as God is the protection of who comes through that little small gate. He has rules that, that will allow us to conform to before we come through that gate. The people that are part of his organization, members only club, only 
goes with his rules. And we know that as we follow his rules, it's going to be good. We're going to obtain joy. He wants the good, everything good to happen for us. Because he gave his only begotten son for us so that we can find our way out of the knowledge of good and evil back to him. We're in the world, the midst of the world of good and evil, and we have a choice of good and evil. We're trying to distinguish them both. But what happens is that Satan has dressed up evil to make it look good for us. To make it look palatable for us. The makeup, the the, the butt lifts, uh, 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 the, the, uh, all the makeup, the flashy eyelashes and everything. That is Satan's tool to use to beautify. To make, us, make it pleasing to us. But once we take it in our house, we got hell. It's like the Trojan horse. You remember the Trojan horse where, where all the soldiers um, got into the to that, that hollowed out horse and it was wheeled into the city. And, and at night the soldiers got out and conquered the city because they brought the Trojan horse into the city. That's what we're doing when we're bringing um, Satan's word into the household. We're thinking fairness. God is not fair. He's not. He never intended for you to bring that stuff into your household and then try to weed it out. Once it's brought into your household, it's hell of fire to get it out. That's the reason why man is, is, is the filter of foolishness. But if you have your, your helper sitting there um, trying to battle against you and you're trying to filter out foolishness out of, the, out of the household, you have to have a unified front. That's the reason why God says that once you find a wife, you find a good thing. Because God is good. You see that? Words mean something. God's good. That means righteous. That means worthy of all things. Righteousness. God's not fair. He's righteous. God's good, not fair. Amen. And that's what we're having problems with. We're having problems finding our helper in the wilderness. And the wilderness has bombarded her mind and, and make her think that, oh, I got to put on makeup and everything. She's putting on a mask to disguise who she truly is because she feels that she can't stand alone on herself. Now, if you're covered by your daddy, who's a righteous man, he's not going to allow his daughter to wear that crap on her face. He's not going to allow his daughter to go out there and party hardy, shaking her, her tail feather out there in the clubs. He's going to make sure that his daughter is going to be a wife. Because his daughter's got his name tacked on her. He's not going to allow his daughter to go out there and do that kind of thing. A righteous man. Because she, the righteous man's legacy is through his children. That's the reason why the children has his last name. Because the children belong to him. Not the mama. The mama can't train up. That's not her job. Her job is to follow you as you follow God. Get that through your head. We don't conform to her. You conform. She conforms to you. You're the head. You're the king. You're the Lord. You are the Lord and the pastor of your house. You, and, and how you guide and control your house is through the word of God. Because he is your leader. You follow him. And he ain't going to deviate. Because he ain't fair. God's not fair. Get that through your head, man. 
Men, it used to be that we tried to conform ourselves to get the women to like us. And, 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 and we're thinking that if we say what they want us to say, um, then, then we are, we're going to get in her pants or get her to like us. That don't work, man. You, you what you are is a, a, a term as a simp. You are a man of emotion, just like women, mothers, when they're raising children, they conform to what the children like because they want to be liked. They don't want to be righteous. They want to be liked because that's an emotional trait. You want to be liked and looked upon favorably. You want to be liked by your kids, so you let the kids dictate to you, or you conform to the kids, so that the kids will say, oh, my mama is, is, is fair. She's good. I like her. God don't care about being liked because likeness is a emotion. It's an emotion. Emotion is unreliable. Emotion is conditional. That's what's going on here. We want to be fair. And fairness is the, the, the direct link to hell. The kids will like you all the way to hell. But righteousness don't care about being liked. That's the reason why I say, hey, look, my my channel is is dedicate to God. I do what I said to God, what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. I know that I can rely on the Holy Spirit because and I know that the Holy Spirit and God's the same. The Holy Spirit don't deviate from God's word. So I'm and the, and the Holy Spirit is is what God's man today on earth. He left the comforter with us. And the comforter is is omnipresent, which means he's all over at the same all over at one time. That's the reason why Jesus says, It'll be best for me, it'll be best for you when I leave. Which means that during the Jesus day, he was omnipresent. I mean he was he was he was he couldn't be at everything at one time. He couldn't be every place at one time. And and when when that that some that soldier came to him and say, um, um, could you come to my house? I mean, um, my my daughter's sick, uh, and 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 um, and Jesus said, okay, I'll come to the house and 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 heal her. Well, the soldier says, no, nah, uh, uh, you ain't got to come to my house. All you got to do is say the word. I'm a general. And I say that if I tell some, uh, one soldier to do something and get the message to the other soldiers, they're going to do what I say do. So I know that you are, are, are the same. So all you got to do is say the word. You ain't got to come to my house. It's not required for you to be there. All it is is your word. And, and Jesus looked around and said, look at this man right here. He gets it. All you other people think that I got to be present and you don't take my word. You think that I have to be present for things to happen, miracles to happen. But this man that's an unbeliever came to me and said, all I got to do is say the word and he knows that my, his daughter is healed. What kind of, he has more faith than you guys. He's talking to his, his, his disciples, his apostles that followed him. All God is, is the word. All he's got to do is say, speak the word. Like he spoke the, the world into existence. He spoke the word. Was his word came out and made changes. His word. He didn't go out there and, and physically do the work. All he had to do was speak it. Speak it. That's the same trait and the attributes that he gives to the father. The fathers of the house, the head of households. The head of households, all they got to do is say, no. You ain't going to no movies. 
But dad, I I I, I want to go to the movies. Well, I, I need to know the the answers that I ask you. Is, is does the boy have a driver's license? Does the boy got a job? Does the boy uh, what kind of family he came from? Who's his people? Because I have to ask who his people are to determine how much what kind of trait he has. Because whatever his father did, or whoever whoever his father is, if his father's a heathen, then the boy's a heathen. Because the the traits of the children go to the father. The father passed it down to the children. So when the father, when the man is, is preparing his daughter to be a wife, he's looking for someone that he, he will vet the boy to see who his people are. And he knows that if, he, if, his, if his daddy was a heathen, he's going to be a heathen because he has nothing else to rely on. The boy can't help to do what what he learned up what he was inside him so it's the same that's the reason why we have no business looking for a wife in the world your wife through holy matrimony is coming from another man of God because you know that she, he has put all God's goodness in her so you can pick from her she ain't got no makeup on because her daddy ain't gonna allow no makeup in his house what you see is what you get don't you realize that God don't make junk you're beautiful from without you don't need no enhancement Satan needs enhancement because he's trying to make you look another way and he's putting masks on you. Men don't want masks. That's not what we're, that's not what we want. We keep telling you that. We want realness. We want the way God created you. Because what we see is beauty. Because what we see is beauty and, and God's gift. That's the reason why, man, you, you come from your father's house to your husband's house. And these people with long courtships and everything, uh, we've been engaged for so many years and everything. That's foolish. Because engagement means that she can still be influenced by the world. She ain't in your, under your covering anymore. She just a promise of her covering. And as she is, she's in the world, wandering around getting bodies, experimenting with everything she can. And then eventually you're going to wife her up. By that time, she's already got all this junk on her, bringing it to your house. And you want her to be cooperative, to cooperate you, conform to you. No, she's not. That's the reason why you get them from their daddy. Because her daddy's not going to allow her to be out there in the world. Being a floozy, experimenting, body counts. Daddy ain't going to allow that. She's going to come in at the right time, and if she goes out, she's going to take her little sister, little brother with her. as a chaperone. And daddy's going to filter who she see. Because he's not going to allow her to see heathens. She's not. He's gonna allow. Not gonna allow her to be in the company of heathens. Because whatever whatever company you are in, you are you bring that smell of of where you've been back to the house. Why do you think your mama say, "Come here and give me a kiss" before you get out here and go to school? I said, "Oh, mom, you had to get a kiss." Get she's kissing you and smelling you at the same time. She's kissing you and smelling you at the same time. So wherever you walk out of the house, you pick up the scent of where you came through. Where you came through. So she says, honey, how you, how you been? How's your day? Come give me mama a kiss. When, you, when At the end of the day, come give your mama a kiss. She's smelling you. To see if you picked up a scent that you that was not on you when you left. And after she kissed you, she said, Where you been? Would you tell me about your day? Where you been? 
You're going to actually give her the, the, the abbreviated form of what happened to your day. And you and you didn't tell her that you were behind before you got home. You were smoking some dope with your buddies and smoking cigarettes or drinking with your buddies. And so you come home with that scent on you. And when she asks you where you've been, she know you're lying. Sometimes she'll come out and say, You lying. You didn't you 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 went so and so. And you're gonna say, How in the hell she know that? That's the same that's the same logic as when a police officer stops your car. You stupidly are smoking marijuana and smoking dope and everything in your car, and then when you roll down the window, that scent is there. So the police officer says, Where you um sir, can I have your driver's license and registration? Why you open when you open up the window and give them your driver's license and registration, the police officer smelling. He's smelling. And if he smells drugs or smells dope in your car, that means that you are having drugs in your, your car. Sir, can I search your car? Get out, sir. Can I search your car? Permission. No. Why? Why? Because he smelled dope on you. And he puts you in a position to 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 so that he, he that you're giving him probable cause uh, to search your car. Wherever you can reach from the driver's seat, he can search because he can say, "Hey, look, I don't know whether he had a his wingspan is long enough." To reach over there. So he the, all that stuff that you're reaching for. Is fair game. But you don't know that. That's just like your mama smelling you. Wherever you go. You pick up the scent. Same thing God says. Is he knows. He, he, he knows where you've been. Because he sees you. He cares about you. Just as your mama cares about you. He's righteous. He's not fair. A fair God is a is is going to is going to be allowing you to dibble and dabble with hell. He don't he's not fair. He's righteous. Amen. I had to uh this the Holy Spirit gave me gave this lesson to you. Um um, another thing that I need to cover, it says that make the people feel a and treat it kindly and with respect. That's fairness. Making the people feel and treat it kindly with respect that they are given a chance and help based on their own needs, which means that you're a fair a fairness person is making people everybody equal and you're making them feel um and you're treating them kindly and giving them respect you cannot give evil respect because the enemy don't have any respect for goodness he wants to pry you away from god that's the reason why you should not even keep company with satan because the knowledge of good and evil, we can't distinguish from. We can't. That's the reason why we're in the problems that we're in. Because we're given our God as a fair God. We're given good and evil. We're given evil and good the same footing. We're thinking that they're equal. They're not. And we're thinking fairness is 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 a fair thing. That's stupid. That's the reason why when you find when a man finds his wife, he finds a good thing. That's a righteous thing, just like God is righteous. Amen. I had to get that lesson in. And I hope and pray that, that by me breaking it down like that, that it'll make it easier for us all to understand and to grasp 
what's happening in the world now. Okay, um, I, I know I've harped on the weapons of mass destruction is the TV, the, the telephone, and the uh, feminism. That's how the, that's how Satan is 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 deviating it in the world because he's he's poisoning our help meet. Our helpers are as the tool and the and the, the way to our household. Because he's behind the scene while you're going to work, he's poisoning your wife's mind with the TV. And she's getting on the phone, talking to her girlfriends, and her girlfriends are her, her cheerleading. Yeah, go girl, you go girl. And feminism got her thinking that she's equal to you. That's all Satan needs. That's all Satan needs. Because there's there's no goodness in her. She he's prying goodness from her and making it fair. Fairness. Fairness has is it has a way of prying you away from goodness. Because you're giving fairness an equal bidding. And all he needs, you give him an inch, he's gonna take a mile. And before you know it, you're gonna be it's gonna be you you in the household by yourself and 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 you are going to you're not ruler of the house anymore you are a guest in your own home because the women your 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 helper and your children are against you they've teamed up with one another and you are the guest you are the temporary occupant of the household so you feel that you you need to get some authority so you created what they call a man cave because that that that's the only way that you can get refuge is in your man cave because you don't own every, you can't rule your household without conflict so you go to your man cave for refuge and close out the rest of the house You see what's going on? We have been relegated to a room in our own home. Nah, you wasn't supposed to just, you're not supposed to be um, um, ruling a room. Your refuse comes from your house, your castle that you created. The castle is yours. Everyone conforms to your will as you conform to God's. Stand up, slap your balls back on, and, and rule. Amen? If, and God says that, that uh, you know, um, you are in charge. You are the filter of foolishness in your house. Amen? And he shows you how to pick a wife from another man of God. Because she has been trained to be a wife from her daddy. Amen. Uh, I, I pray that, that what we talked about is going to be planted on fertile ground. And it will grow. As, as always, I say, hey, please, um, subscribe. Thumbs up. Get the notification bell so anything else that I put on new, you'll be notified. And also to share with somebody what we talked about. Share the good news. That's what good news is supposed to be for us, to share it with everybody. And, per, and, and even the heathens. Because the, the word of God will increase. It may, it may change their heart. And they may look. They may be looking for a way out of and understanding why they are where they are, why they have. They need to experience joy, and you need to share the word of God with them. God's word is the good news, and I pray that I continue to bring you the good news. I am an agent of God, dedicated to God. He leads me. He controls everything that comes out of my mouth. 
Amen? Because he, I know that if, if I deviate from what he tells me to do, I will die. He will kill me. And I will be banished to hell. Die. I will have a funeral. And I don't want a funeral. I, don't, I want a home going service. When I get out of this tent that I'm in right now, I want my soul to go to heaven with him. The one that that, that, that place where he's preparing for me right now. Amen. That's where I want my soul to go. Heaven. To a righteous God. To a good God. I'm covered by him. And I am the enemy of the enemy. Amen. That's where you need to be. You're, you're, you're standing on solid ground. His word. And you can't be shaken and can't be changed. Amen. Stand on solid ground, which is the word of God. And that's how, and you don't jump into the river trying to save somebody. Because they will panic and drag you down with them. I'm so happy that you, you spent this time with me. I'm so happy that that um, and, and that you're here with me and I love you very much. And I'm here to fight for the souls of our family because we're losing so many of us out there. And and I don't it's, it, we're in a warfare. So it has nothing to do with me trying to be nice. I'll just, I don't I don't care about being nice. I want to be right. Righteous, just like we have a righteous God. I don't care. Really, I'm I'm a, uh, the uh, son of a female dog. I don't care. You can call me all kinds of names, but all I know is that the one who I'm serving, the one who who is guiding me, is righteous, and he's got a place for me in my soul. Amen. And you should be able to say the same thing. Experience joy. You can't experience joy the other way. Joy. And get out of that man cave and 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 control your household. You're the king of your castle. You put them on the run down. You you run Satan out of your house. He don't control your house. That house belongs to you. Bring back the word of God. Bring back the word of God in your house. Okay? Remember the symbol? Remember the symbol? Bring back the word husband, house man. You're in charge. This is this is this is your this is your wife. This is you. The children are in the middle because you got the, the children covered from back and forth. Back side and front side of the children. They're between you. This is the word of God. And you are the band of the house. House band. You're bringing the rubber band holding the, the word together. The house together through the, through the word. Standing on the word of God. Because the word of God is going to keep you all together. This is the enemy out here. He's controlling the airways. He's the one that's controlling the TV and the and the telephone and 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 feminism. He's bringing those two to try to divide you and your wife and bringing it to this is God. God is righteousness. You can't find you cannot gain or elevate yourself or increase with Satan. Remember the remember. Amen. I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm here on the battlefield because we're in a warfare and I'm fighting for the souls of the family. Until the next time, this is Reverend Sylvester Hampton saying, God bless you. My prayers are with you. I pray through Jesus Christ that, that he will continue to increase you your knowledge and, and, and have you increase the goodness of your family. And men, have the knowledge that those children belong to you and they are your legacy. I pray that you continue to bless them and to turn out good 
children who are righteous and they can only through, through only through you can you have a righteous family and the family consists of you your wife and children through through holy matrimony amen through holy matrimony through holy matrimony not marriage through holy matrimony there's no such thing as divorce and holy matrimony you got to die out of that amen until the next time this is reverend sylvester hampton i love you nothing you can do about it and uh wait and for my next lesson amen as i will give you at the holy spirit gives me i love you bye-bye